The Tampa Museum of Art is a lot more than just art on the walls. The education team is very busy creating lots of opportunities for the community to engage with art wherever they are. We offer tours to all age groups. We provide lectures with curators and experts. We do in-gallery conversations. We have programs with community partners that are art therapy informed. We offer studio art classes and a number of other ways in which we facilitate learning about the exhibitions and the artworks. After 11 years in this building now, um, we are so excited to expand and renovate our spaces. With the current renovation project that's going on, we're going to almost double our gallery spaces and we're gonna triple our education space. We are going to be expanding how many classrooms we have at the museum. There's going to be a dedicated volunteer lounge for all of our wonderful volunteer docents. This will also be a wonderful opportunity for groups to have a more personalized and customized visit when they come to the museum. By having an education entrance, these kids and their teachers, our youth groups, have this space specifically created and designed for them giving them a space to really acclimate and welcome them and say like, hey, like this is for you. And now, you know, this is what we're going to do when we go upstairs. This is what we're going to see. This is what your visit's going to look like. It can serve as a quiet space to get a group that might have some sensitivities comfortable in the museum, but it can also serve as a corralling space when we have 120 fourth graders coming through the galleries. With the new dedicated education space, we'll be able to have classes when the museum closes, which we're not able to do right now. So it will be much more accessible to members of the community. People will be able to come in after work, students will be able to come in after school, and we'll just be able to keep the classes going. In the new education center, we will have three classrooms, one dedicated to clay, as well as a dedicated tech room that we can do more work with new media as well as partner with our local universities for more opportunities to bring college students in for learning within the education space. We are really lucky to reside in Hillsborough County with the ninth largest public school district in the country. While we also work with schools in other counties such as Pinellas and Polk, Hillsborough County alone sees over 200,000 students per year. So it's really important to us to have expanded gallery space. When K-12 school groups come to the museum, this is a visit that furthers their own learning. It enriches the curriculum so that they can go on and develop critical thinking skills, vocabulary. Studies have shown that arts education has a great impact on students' academic performance, on their social and emotional skills. It gets you to think in a different way. It accesses many parts of your brain. It really helps self-esteem. At this time, I am going to have all of our artists stand up again because they deserve another round of applause. <laughs> With our current gallery configuration, we have a maximum of about 120 students that can comfortably fit in the galleries at a time. We like to keep our groups a little bit smaller with our docents so that we can have um, more engaging conversations with them and easier visibility of the artwork. Some teachers like to bring, you know, the entire fifth grade. With the expanded galleries, we will be able to accommodate that more efficiently and more comfortably for all of those students to have that experience on the same day. Another part of the renovation project that we're really excited about is the ability to show more of our permanent collection. One of our favorite exhibitions to teach from was the Purvis Young 91 exhibition a couple of years ago. So with the reinstallation of Purvis Young, we're really excited to have those conversations with our students and groups again. While it's always exciting to come to the museum and see something new, it's always wonderful to come back to the museum and see an old friend
we are able to present the Haitian voodoo flags to celebrate the African and Francophone diaspora and an important part of the Tampa Bay community. Being able to show more of the permanent collection, we'll be able to go back to those familiar pieces of artwork and be able to plan more activities. And I think there'll be a lot of connections made with those art pieces. Right now, it's fabulous that our galleries change over so frequently to constantly keep our community engaged. But for our teachers, it can be challenging because if they're planning their curriculum a year or two years out, it is not always easy to incorporate our artwork into the classroom lesson plan. And so having permanent collection pieces on view for a little bit longer time period will really help us dive into that material and become true experts. I am a registered art therapist and a licensed mental health counselor, but in my role at the museum with the art space program, I use my art therapy background and knowledge to design specialized activities for a variety of audiences. I tailor the tours and activities to meet their needs and to make sure they feel safe and comfortable looking at the art and expressing themselves. And I also go out to sites in the community and do art therapy informed activities with them. One of the programs that I oversee here at the Tampa Museum of Art is the Connections Program. It is a program that is designed to use art as a therapeutic tool and an expansion of therapies that these groups might be going through. And so we can work with these groups to bring the art into the conversation and use it as a mediator for having conversations about what's going on in people's lives. Art making creates a moment of safety and focus and a calmness, which is a good environment for really anybody. Tampa is growing and it's important that our museum keeps up with that growth and continues to support our community. The expansion project in the groundbreaking, which is going to happen before the end of this year, is going to include outdoor sculpture area, which we will be able to teach from, new part of the building, which is going to extend out to the river, and all these wonderful things that we're really excited about. But most of all, we're really excited that we're going to have an auditorium that's going to add so much to our programming. We'll be able to have more performances and lectures. It'll just add so much to what we'll be able to teach from. We currently have a flat floor, lecture hall, multi-purpose space that's been wonderful for all the different ways that we can program it and how we can continually transform it from dance and music performances to lectures with experts. But having a dedicated auditorium will really give us an opportunity to push our lecture series and our performing arts series and think about ways in which we can further engage the community. It's important to keep experiencing new things, to visit with each other, make new friends, build a community. And that's what our programs do here. They help keep people thinking, exploring, and connecting with each other. One of my favorite things about being a museum educator is walking with a group into a new exhibition and seeing their reaction to the artwork for the first time. Their eyes will widen and depending on the art piece, children will get really excited about it and they might start to make connections with it. It really makes me happy and it warms my heart to see people have a positive experience with art. Looking at and pointing at what we want is how we first learn to communicate. And so oftentimes when I'm in the galleries, people will be describing a work of art to me and they're at a loss for words, but the entire group knows exactly what they mean. So when somebody is at a loss for words, art can step in and be that thing that helps translate across cultures, across generations, across languages, and be that mediator for understanding each other. One of the best things about being a museum educator are the wonderful and adorable and creative thank you notes that we get from some of our school groups after they come on tour. It's so wonderful to be able to read in the students' own words how much fun they had and what stood out to them and what they remembered and what they went home and told you know their parents about. It's, it's incredible, Those are they're amazing. <laughs> 
it's amazing when a child who you know is in foster care that doesn't have a lot of things that actually belong to them they're able to come here and have an experience that belongs to them they're able to contribute and have their opinions and their thoughts validated by conversations with museum educators they have an experience of their own and an artwork of their own that's important and with building more gallery spaces building more classroom spaces that means we're just able to reach even more of the community and have more experiences for everyone.